And it is Women's Month. Happy Women's Month. Uh, this long weekend, officially Women's Day. And... Um, I remember a couple of years ago, I think it was with my first baby, um, and while I was pregnant, my gynae, um shared the very disturbing news at the time that I had a fibroid. So here I am expecting a little person, um, and a fibroid was discovered, and she's like, yeah, it, don't worry, it's nothing to stress about, uh, but it is there, but we can't do anything about it for now, we'll have to wait until you know, you've given birth, etc., etc." And then, you know how it is, we're us ladies, we talk, and through conversations with different women in different spaces, I actually realized that this is a, a very common issue, that there's a lot of women running around all over the place where at some point or another have to deal with this. Um, and of course the operation happened later on and I'm here, so it all worked out. Uh, but I thought it'd be great to talk to somebody who um, is a bit more knowledgeable in these matters, uh, just to enlighten us a bit in case perhaps you've uh, received a recent diagnosis and you might be a bit concerned about what that actually means. And uh, I'm happy to have Dr. Andrew Lawson uh, from Fibroid Care on the line with us just to chat to us um, about this this really, really important issue. How are you doing, Dr. Lawson? Good morning, Bernardo. Thank you very much. I'm doing very well. And you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for giving us your time. That's so, a pleasure. Yeah, let's start at the beginning. What What is a fibroid? Like, I mean, for me, before I even... I, I, you know, I'm, and I'm not proud of this ignorance, but uh, before one was discovered in my body, I hadn't really heard much about it. I didn't even know what it was. So what exactly is it? Fantastic. I'll explain that in a second, but I wonder if I might pick up on, on, your, on your story that you shared with us mm. um, and just make a little uh, comment, because I very often get ladies who phone me who say, look, I've just been to the gynae, I've been told I've got a fibroid, but I'm pregnant. Yes. And in fact, just the other day, a lady said she ended her pregnancy because of this fibroid. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, really, fibroids are very common. And if you have, and this is, this is sort of a, a cry out to all those ladies out there who have fibroids and who are pregnant. Let the pregnancy continue. Mm. The doctors can manage that fibroid as your pregnancy continues. There's no reason to, just because you have a fibroid, stop your pregnancy. I think that's really, really, really important. Yeah. Many women are terrified the first time they've been told that they've got a fibroid and they're pregnant. So really, you know, give it a lot of thought before you decide to, to end the pregnancy just based on the fact that you've got a fibroid. Mm. Many women fall pregnant very easily with fibroids. They carry their baby for full term, even with the fibroid. Yes, there might be a few problems during the pregnancy, some pain, some discomfort. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's not going to kill you and you should have a healthy baby at the end of it. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I thought that's a, a, it's a great story for you to have shared, but I just want to, to reiterate that um, just because you have a fibre, it doesn't mean your life has to stop. Yes. Yes, and I am living proof of that because I'm here. And my exactly. baby was was born to the day, due date, healthy, 10 fingers, 10 toes, and the whole works. Perfect, perfect. And that's wonderful news. That's really, really wonderful news. And thank you for sharing that. Right? Oh, no. You know, I, I think if, if more people share their stories, then the general knowledge of healthcare is improved. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so, so, so what is a fibroid? And do all women oh. develop them? So what is a fibroid? It, it's a very simple concept. So the fibroid grows in a woman's womb. Now, a womb is basically just muscle. It's a muscle in which uh, a baby can grow, and eventually the baby gets pushed out to deliver it normally. Mm-hmm. Now, in that muscle, for some reason, we don't know why, very unlikely related to your diet or to your activities. We do know if there is a, it's something in the genes, we don't know what it is, but for some reason, a non-cancerous growth will develop in the muscle of the womb. Mm-hmm. That's really important. It's not cancer. It's, it's not cancer. Yes. It's just a growth. It's a solid muscle growth within inside the wall of the womb. Now, it's incredibly common. We see it in one in every five women. Oh, wow. And here's even a more frightening statistic. In three out of those five women, it is likely that those fibroids will need to be treated because they're causing problems to that woman. Now, those problems are the following. The woman would complain of very heavy menstrual bleeding, mm-hmm. passing clots, pain associated with her, her periods. I'm not talking pain that will respond to, you know, just the grandpa or something. Like yes. serious pain that you need to take off work or you need to spend the morning in bed. Um, a lot of women, depending on the size of the fibroid, will complain that they feel awfully bloated 
mm. and swollen around their periods. And then often, if they're big fibroids, the ladies will complain of running to the bathroom to urinate. Often, quite often at night, where they're running up and down to the bathroom because these silly fibroids are pressing on their bladder. Yeah. Because the womb and the bladder lie so close to each other. So, so what is it? It's, it's, it's a non-cancerous growth of, of, of muscle in the womb, and it can cause, in order probably, heavy periods, pain, bloating, and pressure on the bladder. Now, do all fibroids need to be treated? Certainly not. Only the fibroids that are causing troubles need to be treated. Oh. And again, I can't reiterate this to your, to, to your listeners. Mm-hmm. Many ladies have fibroids, yes, and they go to their GP, their family doctor, or their gynae, they have a scan, an ultrasound scan, and someone says, oh, you've got a fibroid. Mm. We must cut it out, or we must do something about it. Well, yeah. you know, the, the woman needs to think about that and go, well, is this fibroid truly affecting my life? Yes. And if you don't have any of the symptoms, leave it. Okay. So it's not going to affect you in any other way. It will. What happens? Will it just shrivel and die? Will it just stay there indefinitely? Well, well usually, usually a fibroid responds to a woman's estrogen. Now, estrogen is the normal hormones that a woman under 50 has floating around her blood. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, that, that's what allows you to fall pregnant and you know, make you look like a woman. The estrogen is a normal hormone. Yeah. Fibroids grow in the presence of hormones. But, you know, if you have a, a fibroid and it's not causing you any problem, leave it. Let's say in two or three or four or five years' time, it grows and now suddenly causes heavy periods of pain. Mm-hmm. Yes, do something about it. And again, this is so important to understand. Whatever there is out there to treat fibroids, there's always a risk of something going wrong. Okay. So let's say you have an operation. Let's say you have the treatment that I perform, which is called embolization. It's a minimally invasive, non-surgical form of treatment for fibroids. Mm-hmm. There's always a risk. And what you want to decide as, a, as an individual with fibroids is does the risk of getting treatment outweigh the benefit of being treated for fibroids? Okay. So here, here's an example. Here's okay. an example. This is an example of someone or individuals who I treat very commonly. Ladies have got fibroids, and often the patients that I treat have got several fibroids. Mm-hmm. They bleed terribly. They've got low iron, and the ladies out there with fibroids will know what I mean when I say low iron. They've got a low blood count. They're feeling tired, headachey, and all these things. Sometimes they'll end up in hospital because they've lost so much blood. Mm -hmm. Now, when we treat these ladies, they do fantastically well. And after treatment, the fibroids die, they shrink, and their life gets back. The iron climbs up, they lose their dizziness, they don't need more hospital admissions, and they go back to leading a normal life. This is the kind of result that you want. You don't want someone who just has a fibroid, you treat it, and afterwards, they're the same. That seems a bit of a waste, doesn't it? Mm. You know, you want to treat someone who's after the treatment really going to benefit from the treatment. It's going to turn around and say, Doc, family doctor, gynae, whoever has treated them, my life is better. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's what you want. Absolutely. Yes, it, you if you've just joined us, we're in conversation with Dr. Andrew uh, Lawson uh, from FibroCare, uh, talking about exactly that, fibroids um, affecting a lot of women. Now we know the statistics. I think he said one in five women. Uh, so really common. We're happy to know that they're non-cancerous, which is a great comfort. Um, That's great. And uh, in case you missed it earlier on, that uh, if you happen to be pregnant and a fibroid is discovered, it's not necessarily, uh, it does not necessarily mean that you need to end the pregnancy. You can happily um, go full term, deliver, and then take care of it if it even affects your life in any negative way uh, later on. Um, so having a fibroid basically does not mean that um, I automatically need surgery then. Absolutely, absolutely. And maybe this is a bit to reflect on, on how we treat fibroids that need to be treated. Yes. So basically, there's three things that you can do or four things that you can do for a fibroid. Mm -hmm. Now, many of my patients say, well, they've tried hormonal manipulation. Okay. Now, in in simple terms, that means the family doctor or gynae has put them on the pill. Oh, does that work? That works for small fibroids and some fibroids. Um, And quite often, the fibroids in in our country, let's call it this, let, let me take a step back. So fibroid care, this is an initiative that is aimed at treating fibroids using this minimally invasive technique called embolization. Mm-hmm. And we do it in South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Tanzania, Kenya, across.
across the subcontinent. So we see an incredible range of fibroids. Mm -hmm. And what we can say is that in our, let's call this our Saharan African fibroids, we see lots of fibroids in one patient of varying sizes. So often hormonal manipulation doesn't work that well. There's a place for it, make no mistake, okay. but it doesn't always work that well. So that's option one. Option two, and let's go from most hectic to not so hectic, mm -hmm. is complete removal of the womb. This is called hysterectomy. Goodness. Now, in many people, particularly women aged under 40, 45, that's completely unacceptable because that means zero chances of having a baby again. Mm -hmm. um, and many women will say, well, you've taken my womb away. I don't feel like a woman anymore. Sure. Um, and again, I'm relating to you stuff that has come from patients. Mm. Patients have told me, I'm talking about 80-90% of my patients tell me this. So they find that unacceptable. Then you have the next step. It's called the surgical removal of fibroids, and that's called a myomectomy. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a very big place for myomectomy. Um, and again, this is something that the individuals need to discuss with a gynecologist. Myomectomy is a very good form of treatment for fibroids. The surgeon or the gynecologist will cut the lady like a cesarean section cut. Okay. And they will take out the fibroids, literally take them out and leave the womb behind. And this obviously means that you can still have babies afterwards. Mm -hmm. and that's fine. The issue, and again, I'm not talking about the fibroids that we see in sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, etc., etc. These fibroids grow back. So a lady is operated on, the fibroids are cut out. Now, from a gynecologist will say, please, try and fall pregnant in the next year or two because the fibroids will come back. So that means two, three years later, you're going to need another operation. All right? Sure. And then the, the, the fourth form of treatment is, is what I do, this thing called embolization. It's this minimally invasive form of treatment where we identify and target the fibroids' blood supply, their mm. lifeline. All right? And we do that by putting a very small catheter or very small flexible tube, no bigger than the size of a needle that you'd have your blood taken with, into the artery of the leg and we identify the blood supply to the fibroids and block that blood supply. So that means all of the fibroids, and I mean all of them, now suddenly lose their blood supply. Now it doesn't take a leap of faith to believe that if you've lost blood supply to something, it will <laughs> die. Absolutely. You know, that makes logical sense. So the fibroid then dies. It shrinks down and forms a tiny little harmless scar. Hmm. Now, all of a sudden, your symptoms are gone, your fibroids are dead, and what's very nice, and you can read this in any journal or any article anywhere, chances of those fibroids coming back are very, very, very small. Dr. Lawson, just in terms of treatment, is it the size of the fibro that determines what kind of treatment, if any, you're going to need? Or is it just about how uncomfortable it makes you feel, whether it's the size of... Um, so there are a couple of things. Yeah. The first thing is, does the individual have symptoms? And let's use the common symptoms. Heavy periods and a lot of pain during their periods. Mm -hmm. Now, then we look at it we say, right, this lady has got bad symptoms from whatever it's caused. Then we go, let's look at the fibroids. We identify she's got a fibroid. Why? How? We do an ultrasound scan. Now, a sonar scan. Now, many people don't really understand what this is. It's, it's very simple. The scan you have when you're pregnant to look at the baby, mm -hmm. that's an ultrasound scan. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it, it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't cost much. Um, and it's great at identifying the fibroids. So we see the fibroids. Let's say we see a very small fibroid. Now, when I say very small, I talk about the size of a pea. Okay. That's really small. Yeah. That is not going to cause any problems to anyone. Ah, so it is but about the size. It is about the size. Mm. If we see a fibroid the size of a golf ball or an apple, you know, that fibroid is going to cause problems. Mm. And then, of course, we look to see exactly where it is. Quite often when the fibroid is lying where the baby should lie, those fibroids cause terrible problems for the woman. Okay. Now, sometimes when it's lying, you know, just on top of the womb, quite a distance from where the baby lies, you know, it's unlikely that fibroid is causing problems. Mm -hmm. So we really look at size and where in the womb it is, it is located. And, of course, number of fibroids. And this is really important. You know, one fibroid, you can easily manage that, treat yeah. it. But quite often, there are lots of fibroids. 
So there's no point in just treating the one fibroid because there are 10 others that will cause problems as well. Mm-hmm. So you need to decide how you're going to treat that. All righty. I'm, I'm realizing that when we spoke initially about the fact that one in five women, uh, the question that I really wanted to know is um, what age groups are we talking about here? Just in terms of what's, what is the likelihood that uh, this could be something that suddenly occurs? All right. So, so let's look at the extremes. So the first thing is a woman who is into the menopause, so mm-hmm. that's over 50, she cannot have fibroids. That's okay. really important. I think your listeners really need to, to hear it. Because I often get a call from a daughter saying, you know, my mum's got fibroids. And I say, how old's your mum? And my mum's 60. Okay, that, that's impossible. Okay. All right? She, she needs the, 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 the woman after menopause. It's not fibroids. She either needs a second opinion or she needs to go and see a gynecologist. There's okay. something else going on. So that's really important. So that means we look at ladies under 50, I'm thinking 50 is the average age for menopause. And in this country, it's about 51, 52. Mm-hmm. So they have to be before the menopause. Well, then you ask, well, how soon before the menopause? The youngest patient I've treated with fibroids, you won't believe this, is 23. 22? 23. 23. Okay. Yes. Okay, so, yep. so it's clearly somewhere along your child-bearing years, round about Absolutely. then. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So we commonly see fibroids starting realistically around the age of 28, 29, 30. Interesting. So from there on, they start coming. And again, what we often see is ladies who have completed their pregnancy, their, their, their families. Now they say 35, 36, 37, and the fibroids suddenly decide to start growing a lot. Yeah. By the time they reach 40, 41, they're tired of the symptoms and they start seeking help. Interesting. Is there anything lifestyle related that one can do to avoid getting fibroids? Is it just a matter of estrogen? It is one of those things. So I'm trying to establish what is it that the other four women out of the five are doing who are not getting fibroids? That's right. That's right. So that's, that's hard. And again, you know, our experience extends across up Saharan Africa. And I get this question from almost everyone. Yeah. And I can quite confidently say that. There's nothing lifestyle related. It's really stuck in your genes. Oh wow! It's stuck in what has made us human. Um, there's, there's actually, there's a, there's a predominance based on what country you're from. Hmm. <laughs> you won't believe it. A lot of individuals who come from West Africa have got really big fibroids, and it seems like the, the closer you are to West Africa and the closer you come down to us here in South Africa the bigger and weirder the fibroids are. There's, there's something bizarre in our, in our DNA. don't know what it is. We often see it among sisters, and obviously in twins, we often see it in families. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't mean just someone in the community who's got no family just and won't have a fibroid. It's very, very, very common. And unfortunately, quite often I get ladies who come to me and say, you know, Doc, for the past two years I've been taking ginger and cloves and this, that, and the next thing. You know, by the time they come to us, these fibroids are now almost the size of a soccer ball. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We treat really, really, really big fibroids. Um, and that's quite bad because, you know, they've been trying these herbal medicines or these alternatives, and someone's been giving them bad information. And so this woman who started off, say, two, three years ago with an apple-sized fibroid, quick, easy treatment, no complications, now we sit with a soccer ball and that's something. Um, and you can imagine how hard that is to treat. We can treat it, but the road to recovery is a little bit longer. Yeah. You can get it much sooner. Um, so I think empowerment is really important. And the more people read online and, and see that, you know, look for the big treatments, hormonal manipulation, surgery, embolization. These are tried and tested ways of of, of managing fibroids successfully. Just in, t- um, in terms of those treatment methods, uh, Dr. Lawson, does a woman get to choose... Oh, um, I imagine that you would give your medical profession uh, professional advice, obviously, on what's best. But is it a case of these are your four options? Which one do you want to go with? So that's that's a really good question because you can imagine in a, in a medical profession, you know, you, you you can quite easily decide to to abuse your, your position as being a doctor, and you can just dictate to your patient what to do. Yeah. Um, so we have to be very careful that when we counsel a patient. We give them the best advice available for their situation. Yeah. So, you know, someone with a soccer ball fibroid, you 
know, comes, I'm not going to tell her to go and use hormonal manipulation. Mm. You know, that's just wrong. It's not going to work. So she's going to be faced with some form of intervention, either surgery or embolization. And I will try to guide her along the lines that I think is going to be best for her um, and counsel her appropriately. But at the end of the day, the decision lies with the patient. Yeah. Our job in the medical practice is to empower the patients to understand their condition, understand the treatments available, mm-hmm. understand the potential complications, and make an informed decision. Wow. So as we become more and more specialized, we certainly are supposed to guide our patients along an ethical practice. Because mm-hmm. I've got to be very careful. You know, I can sell what I do to anyone, but that's wrong. Yeah. No, we have to empower our patients and have to show them this is what's available. These are the things that will work quite well in your condition. Mm -hmm. We've seen it before. Go and have a look. But at the end of the day, we we totally have to respect the patient's um, decision. And what I encourage all my patients is go and have a second opinion if they're uncomfortable with what they've heard from someone else. Yeah. And a second opinion will cost you a consultation. Yeah, absolutely. All right, this has been really good. I'm so glad we had this conversation. If somebody want to get uh, wants to get in touch with you, uh, where can they find you? Are you on social media? Do you have a website, landline? Yes, yes all of the above. So our website is fibroidcare.co.za, really easily. Um, they can simply Google my name, Dr. Lawson, and Fibroids, and they'll find our website. We're on Facebook as well under Fibroid Care. Um, and then the line you've called is also a business line. Um, and that you can share quite openly with your listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's the best way to do it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Exactly. This has been really, really good. Very informative. I'm sure that there's a, a, a bunch of women out there just sighing, <laughs> like a sigh of relief. <laughs> that there is oh, no, I wonder, Yeah. I wonder for a second, you know, we, we, we always have to talk about something like this. Um, and that's funding. Um, and many people will go, oh, wonderful, this is great news, how much does it cost? Yes. Now, what I do, this thing called embolization, is covered by the medical aids, along with myomectomy, treatment, all these things. And that's really important to know. What we're talking about here is we're talking about accessible healthcare treatments for our patients. At no point in just saying, listen, guys, you know, we offer this form of treatment, but you're going to have to pay several thousand rand for it. I hear you. You know, what we do is, is, is covered by medical aid. So it's, it's worthwhile thinking about that when you're looking at facing the heart to manage your fire aid. Look at all the options. Look at what's funded by medical aid. Um, and it allows you, again, to make a informed decision that won't bankrupt you either. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, that's. I'm, gl- I'm glad you raised that. Um, another sigh of relief. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, thank you so much. This has been really, really good, uh, Dr. Lawson. Thank you for ha- the time. Yeah, have an awesome, awesome rest of the weekend. And yeah, thank God you. bless you, you. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Uh, that was Dr. Andrew Lawson there of Fibroid Care talking about fibroids. Get in touch with them on 079-810-9423. Alternatively, do visit their website, www.fibroidcare.co.za. They're on Facebook as well. Just look for Fibroid Care. And yeah, get in touch with them. Perhaps you have more questions that we may not have covered. Uh, perhaps, I don't know, maybe you have a special case or whatever the case might be. Do get in touch. Don't suffer or struggle alone. Help is available.